Dana, we got the uh, super talented Jimmy Fallon. Oh, Jim. We're close. I, I kind of Jim, Fall- Jim Fallon and I are very close. James um, J- Jamie Lewis Fallon. Fallon yeah. is on the show. You know, he's an old, old That's right, Dave. buddy, uh, Dana. <laughs> I don't even know where I met him. I mean, I must have visited mm-hmm. SNL and saw him over there, but kind of click easy with that guy. Actually, the first time I was on the show, on The Tonight Show, I thought he was being kind of a fake fan because he was so effusively nice. <laughs> and then I realized he's like that and he's, he's, he's a, a fan. He's, he's a great identically like guy. he is backstage as he is on stage. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a good guy. He knows how to be a talk show host. He knows how to keep that show moving and he's, he's always in a good mood. He's, uh, it's all you want. He's fun and he'll ping pong anything you throw at him. Big, and he's, yeah. he's a great audience. I think it's not giving away or talking out of school, but you do do your Michael J. Fox impression. Yeah. And um, it's a real we carrot. could see him on the Zoom a little bit and he just felt, he would fall almost out of his chair. Whenever he would we'd... fall, he'd laugh so hard he'd fall and then he'd spin up the other side. Yeah, Not sure there'd how. be an empty Zoom thing, and then a giant Jimmy Fallon head would pump up in the front. You know, he just pop up. He's doing somersaults in that room. But he was a crusher on SNL from the get go. Just talented dude, mm-hmm. guitar, music, dance. He could do it all. He's what you call a no brainer. Yeah. Hey, could could do you do you think I could be a sketch player? Uh, what? Yeah, can't that's a no brainer. <laughs> so he, we we uh, we're gonna talk to him. We're gonna cover everything, and we hope you like it. And here's our boy, uh, the good looking guy. Bit of a, Bit of a free fall in the best sense of the word. It was it's a it's a bit of barely controlled mayhem and laughter. And we don't want to get any letters because I'm from the fifties. Don't write us letters about overtalk because at this point it came from effusiveness. Can you spell that, David? Remember you were Yes, I can. Effusive, David. I L Oh, fuck. I'd be out already. Damn, I thought you had like 150 <laughs> IQ. <laughs> no, I spelled Just effusive champ. the other day. And I also, there's another word I heard a lot lately that I really Serendipitous. Like. No, I don't say that a lot. No. No, I say effusively I because in I- in a, in a sentence. Effusively I, a lot? I say, why don't you hmm. compliment me effusively when I meet people? Uh, okay, yeah. we have to do ads, but here is that Jimmy first. <laughs> we, we tend to ramble on because we don't really- We know we're, we're going. We, we don't know how to organize our thoughts. It's, it's called ADHD. Look into it, kids. There's pills for it. Anyway, enjoy- our friend, James Edward Fallon. <laughs> record. Once you see this motherfucker, record. Look record. at this beautiful. Look at this. Great. Look at this. Look at this beautiful thing. Let me tell you something right ta- now. Let me tell you something. <laughs> when I see something this beautiful, I want to touch it. <laughs> you are. I, he was the host. <laughs> now he's now he's hosted. Now Whoops. the host is being hosted. I got to touch it. Oh, it's so beautiful we to see the questions. <laughs> he, he he gives the answers. <laughs> now the, the teachers become seat. the pupil. The pupil become oh, oh, he's in the hot seat now. The host is being hosted and roasted. <laughs> Dude, I can't wait to grill you. What, now, are you going to be hard on me? What? What? Because I yeah, yeah, we're going. This is like deep. sixty minutes. It's like we got a trend. Diane we don't Sawyer. trend. We got You got to say something crazy. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Say some wacky. <laughs> some wacky stuff. You're doing a show tonight and doing this. Yeah, we got a good show tonight. Yeah, we. Got, That's very nice of you, Jimmy. Uh, because uh, yeah, this guy busts his fucking hump. This will be on in 2023, but when? who are the guests tonight? <laughs> it's uh, uh, Glee Clark. He's the leader of a, uh, of a planet, uh, Xenon. Fucking Glee Blop. Yeah. So, yeah, we have Admiral guests from the Klopp, future. Norb. Uh, yeah, from the Pentagon. Hey, that microphone's as big as his head. Look at that fucker. I know, because he's rich. That mic? Not, not as yeah. rich as you, Spade. <laughs> Bullshit. If I had his money, I'd throw mine away. Hey, money bags. Silver hey. spoon. Hey, money bags. Yeah, life life was easy for him. You know what I mean? Yeah, he grew up with two <laughs> spoons in his mouth. All my cash <laughs> is tied up in most of a Bitcoin. <laughs> I told you, Jimmy, next time I come on your show, I'm just doing a French accent the whole time. I'll tell you now. I'm just I'm never going to stop. You won't stop. Just come on and just do a French accent the whole time. I won't stop. Remember that thing we did last time? We were out there as two like European crying. guys. Yeah. Was. It, was, it was my favorite thing ever. I was just crying. <laughs> I couldn't stop. I didn't want it to stop. I could have done it for a half an hour. 
Which was, was great. Wait, are you talking about the, the legends one? thing? You're the greatest. No, you're the greatest. No, no, that legend. One. You're a legend. legend. Yeah. Yes. Legend. Legend. legend is thrown around a lot these days for literally. I like when people go, I saw this thing about growing ups. They go, all you guys are the goats. I go, do you know what goat means? <laughs> I think goat is one. Does people, do people know they just put a goat emoticon? They're too, they're too easy with that goat emoticon. Hey, you just, you just, you, you just put, you make the A plural. You're the best of all those goats. You know? You're the goat of the goats. <laughs> you're the, go- you're you're the, the best of all the goats. Go- goats. You know, Dana, Anyway, thanks Jimmy, for coming on. Yeah. Love we, you. I got my to first business. guy said, can we get Fallon for this podcast? They said, the word was, no fucking way. <laughs> so, so it's your I'm your new nickname is Dream Guest. <laughs> yeah, all right. And uh, you just I, run with that. I'm ready yes. for the one. You, uh, are, you, are we started? Is this or no? It's all, it's oh, almost yeah. Over. We're half over now. Oh, God. I had a great time. <laughs> you have a hard back. out. But I have a hard out one minute before your yes. hard out. How about that power yeah. play? <laughs> I have a hard Who out. Who's first? Time. Yeah, my Every whole life a is pod, a hard out. Dana, when I do a podcast, I go, all right, thanks, guys, right in the middle of an interview. They go, thanks what? I go, later. And they go, what the fuck's going on? I go, I feel like I've told it all. <laughs> David said, we've tortured you enough. We're, we, got a, we got a guest going downtown. Dave, we'll let you go because we've tortured you enough. But we count David's yawns and the amount of little protein bars he has. Because he's, he's Oh, wait, David. I do need one, Heather. Can I get some green juice? Yeah. Yeah. I got to stay awake for some of this. Speed. All right. All right. So, yeah, sorry. Here we go. I have a, I have a real thing to start with. Wait, do you, what, do you want to like have like, are we going to do like a whole thing where you just go like, hey guys, welcome back to Fly on the Wall. We're here with the. Fuck no. Have you heard this dog shit? We just, it's our, we, we just record bullshit that and then later. it's over. Oh. <laughs> yeah. We do it. We do an intro at the beginning where we kiss your ass when you're not here. Oh, good. And then, uh, but listen, Dana, here's a funny story about me and Jimmy. <laughs> Uh, I knew it was going to be about you and no, Jimmy. It, it's Jimmy. <laughs> on IMDb, it says I'm one of Jimmy's friends. That's nice. That's true. I put it on there. The Rolodex King, David. And when I go to New York, Jimmy, the three comedians I call are Jimmy and Chris, Rock, and Quinn. And one time about a year ago, oh my we goodness. all... That's a fun group. So we all try to rally, you know. Jimmy's really good at rallying out. Jimmy's so busy and he always rallies for dinner or something. So we went out to Liller and, um, oh, Jimmy, you were shooting at Coney Island or something and you go, I'll try to get over after I'm done with my- Yeah, it was my- like an hour away from where we are, but that restaurant was so loud that night. Do you remember? Yeah, I know. Yeah. I hate it. Here was the other. Here was the other catch. Yeah. So first of all, you, you somehow, I go, I go, guys, Jimmy might come if he can, and you beat me there. That was one funny part. <laughs> and then when, we, when we're in the middle of dinner and I'm just plotting how I'm not going to pay most of the dinner, that's all I think about. And then we all leave, Jimmy. And then you remember two days later, what do we see on Twitter? Oh, yeah. Chris Rock announces on Twitter he has COVID. <laughs> we, we don't get a text. We don't get a phone, Nothing. phone call. So yeah. Spade, Spade and I call each other. Jeez. And Spade's like, wait, do, do we have to follow Chris on Twitter to find out that we might, we might have go, go, Luckily, I do follow him and you I do have know to hear I have about that online. Yeah. And then we ask him, he's like, what? Yeah. You read about it, didn't you? I go, well, yeah, but. That was insane. I mean, between a rock and a hard place. Good night. Yeah, it was never been done before. I think that's the whole story. Most of that story was just you, to say we had dinner. Do you end? Uh, do you end up using any bits from the dinners whenever we hang out? Uh, it's sort of a it's sort of a compilation of what all you guys said, and it goes into my act. <laughs> well, jo- <laughs> yeah. John Mulaney said on this podcast he's looking for stories, and David does that too. Like yeah. if someone well, follows him at a McDonald's, he's got a 10 minute chunk. So he likes stories. Yeah. He's a storyteller. Guy anyway. asked me straight up for my McNuggets. Straight up. No bullshit. Just give me your McNuggets. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> he's going to go into it. And I said, fuck. No, I stood my ground, Jimmy. You think I'm a <laughs> pussy, but I stood my ground. No, didn't you? You gave him one. I gave him one, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know the now, story. Now, Jimmy, I know. He knows it's the story. Legendary. Oh, okay. It's legendary. <laughs> it's on it's on your IMDb page. <laughs> let's see if we let's see if we can do something about Jimmy's beginnings that he's never been yeah. asked. That's kind of interesting. No chance. Might be impossible. I did a deep dive. You did? I can't believe I mean I love both of you guys so much. I can't even tell you. I, I want to go into your career and your stuff and everything you've done to influence me. Uh you know, I wanted to be Dana Carvey. I, I wanted to be <laughs> That's my whole reason for getting on Saturday Night Live, and that was my whole 
think. Oh, you you're... said David Spade wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's age. Re- it's that's age related because yeah. <laughs> David. That's no, age I wanted to be Dana David, Carvey. I was sitting is, behind him at Reed through with a knife. Well, yeah, you were. You were, you were my. You were my surrogate. You were my stand-in. Sometimes I do the church chat rehearsals. David had to get the dress on and sit in there for camera blocking, which David, I thought was horrible. David, just for a few minutes, can you sit in there? Dana's resting. But Jimmy, you were twelve when I got on SNL, and that's what I call the peak formative year. It's like when I was listening to Monty Python or whatever gets in your brain at that age and through high school. So I, I appreciate you, bro. Thank you. I, I can't <laughs> tell you how much I would, I, I was such a SNL nerd. I would, uh, I would record it every Saturday night. I would be by myself. I wouldn't be, uh, I, I didn't want friends over. I didn't want anyone around me. My parents, I didn't want anyone near me. I just wanted to study the show and watch it. And I, I videotape it. Then I remember like my favorite sketches and, then I would go to parties like uh, whatever on the next week or whatever, and I would bring videotapes with me with the best clips of SNL. Like I was like a human uh, YouTube, uh, just going around, or watch this part and watch this thing. But I mean, I was like, I loved uh, chopping broccoli. Then she went downtown. <laughs> but she can I tell you some? It's a lady. <laughs> she brought, whoa, whoa. <laughs> She's a lady I know. <laughs> if I didn't know her. <laughs> Uh, be lady, 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 I, I didn't, I didn't know. know. Did you ever put that out? Like, is that out on Spotify or something? No, the only thing I want to say, which was mind blowing a few years back when I did your show, and then I just, it wasn't my idea, but all of a sudden they go, uh, Jimmy wants to do chopping broccoli with an orchestra. <laughs> Remember oh that? God. It was fucking crazy. <laughs> so that was the mic drop of chopping broccoli. There was a string orchestra, <laughs> and then I was playing chopping broccoli on a baby grand. I had a terrible t- hair day because New York water just flattened it. But anyway, that's just my point. But I no. chopped broccoli and I took it really far. She chopped. She chopped. She chopped. She chopped. I uh, think that's twenty. Cho- that's a twenty-minute bit in my stand-up, as you can imagine. But anyway, that's so you, Jimmy. We do have a a kismet. There's a connection to this musicality of what we do and the way you do impressions and everything. I it brought just, a guitar. I mean, I'm in my office. So, I, will I, you play something for yeah. us? That'd be that'd be awesome. You know, Dana. While while Jimmy's futzing around, I have to say that futzing. if you're on SNL and you can play an instrument, Jimmy's like the perfect SNL guy. He plays an instrument. He's marginally good looking. <laughs> he um, <laughs> he voted uh, sexiest. He, one of the he was top voted 50. one of the tallest hosts uh, of the year. <laughs> and he, oh, he's got a harmonic. It's fucking guy. Oh, I know okay, he's gonna for do. The at home, he's I know a, he's gonna do the supernatural. He's either gonna do. He's gonna do one of three: either Dylan, Lennon, or Springsteen, <laughs> no, which are Dylan, all brilliant. Dylan, Dylan's one, but I thought maybe Neil Young too. Oh, D- Neil Young, deal. D- D- yeah, just give me anything. This, this, I'm being entertained Neil now Young, by my guess. Neil Young okay, would play the this? harmonica like he plays it differently than Dylan. D- D- yeah. Neil Young plays the harmonica like with the song, so he's like. Oh, there, 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 something changed. Yeah, it's good now, yeah. Can you hear it now? <laughs> now we hear it. Perfect. Okay. All right. So like Neil Young, Neil Young plays the harmonica like with the, the, the Yeah, tune with of the, the song. No, with the with the yeah. notes. Yeah. So it's like <laughs> David and Dana. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting in a tree. Dana and Dave. <laughs> we're just a fly on the wall <laughs> down the hall of SNL. That's pretty SNL. good. SNL. 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 Dana and Dave. They don't ever call you Dave. Some people do. You have to. Get, you have to get in the real tight circles. And then Dylan's faster. Dylan's like, oh. yeah, and a lot of up and back. Like he hits the highest note of the harmonica and just screams it. So, like, yeah. <laughs> hey, this is a, yeah, that's it, yeah. This is the podcast about Dana and Dave. I saw it on my own world. I don't see my own fate. Go. Sign a wall. 
runs out of stuff, he hits the harmonica. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> when he runs out of lyrics. Have you heard Rough and Ready, his latest album, Rough and Ready, Bob Dylan? Yes. God, it's brilliant. So, a, is it good? Soon After Midnight is a masterpiece. But he's got his new voice. Which is well, like, yeah, that's what I mean. That this other voice, I don't, I haven't really tried to do it, but it's pretty special. Like, it's really it's raw. It's, uh, la, la, la. Yeah, it's soon after midnight, and I got a date with a fairy queen. With a fairy queen. I love yeah, seeing him like, in, in, in see him in concert because sometimes he doesn't feel like performing, and he's just out there, and he's going like. And I'm like, oh man, this is weird. And then he's like, how does it feel? And you go, oh, I love this song. Oh my god, that's it's what he was singing, my friend. Yeah, that's what he was singing the whole time. He, he accidentally doing stumbles into a hit, and then he's like mad he did because he's not torturing you enough. He's Bob one of Dylan. our friends just saw Dylan here in L.A. three nights ago, and was taking bootleg clips. But uh, I guess it's I guess it's interesting, but I think. They said he did like a 45 minute song. Oh, no I got a pop the same quiz for Jimmy what? and oh, David. Okay. What is the one song <laughs> from his big hip hits in the 60s where he stylizes his voice oh. in, a, in a certain way? Lay, Lady Lay. Yep. Now, I know you can do that. Now, let me guess now. Lay, Lay, Lady Lay. It's Kermit the Frog a little bit. Yeah. It's been, you know, some fun. Lady Lay. Lay across my big brass bed. But I love that he experimented with that. He's like, this could be my voice. Yeah, I know. And then it wasn't. But it was a big hit. And then, like, Neil Young. Oh, huge. Neil Young kind of had one song where he was more rocking. And then he realizes his high voice is where it's at. Because no one has that voice. Like, I love Rocking people Rocking in the free world. Yeah. Did you do impressions of everyone on the staff of SNL? Not really. <laughs> like, yeah, who, who would be the big ones? Uh, Higgins? Uh, Mike Shoemaker? <laughs> Marcy Klein? Klein. I mean, could you do cast members? Could you do Spade? Hey, buddy. Oh. Yeah, I'm not going to be reduced to noises today, gentlemen. <laughs> so I was opening the door. I walked in. No, David is an actual good sound effects guy, but he doesn't lean on it. It just comes out. They're woven in. I do you, I don't Jimmy. Have music. I do you. You do? I just do a sound. Just sort of go. Yeah, I was just like, <laughs> that's it's pretty good it, that's the best impression of me it's when you're very very excited like <laughs> something, <laughs> so very excited it's just a, a sound of exuberance which i was thinking today here's a compliment you remind me of the beatles oh jesus wow the early beatles because what you they told me i reminded you of kaja goo goo you were kind Sorry. of uh shaka khan but anyway we'll talk later with, because the early Beatles just pr- just projected so much fun and joy, it was just irresistible. And that's what you do. I appreciate it. You know, it's, it's very <laughs> it's interesting, you know, growing up in Liverpool, we live we live at Pudley, Pudlians, you know, and we'd never eat pudding, you know, and you'd think we'd have a liver pu- pudding, you know. But that's what, what pudding's different, you know, in England. It's not the same, you know, it's not the chocolate, you know, vanilla, you know, strawberry. The whole town was just eating pudding, you know, because it was called yeah, the whole, whole town. We call it little pudding. The whole town was eating pudding, you know. I'd ring up George so you want to go get some pudding. I, go, I said, I mean, John, some right John, now. Would come up, <laughs> John would come over and hit me over there with his guitar, like, let's go get some pudding. <laughs> And that's how we wrote uh, Paperback Writer. <laughs> John would just come in and bang me on the head with his All that guitar. turned into Paperback Writer? <laughs> He'd smash yeah. you with the guitar. We'd sit for a plunker. <laughs> and that's how we let's have a pl- John would come in. He'd hit me over the head, you know, and say, let's go get some pudding. And that's how we wrote... Uh, <laughs> that's how we wrote the White Album, you know. What a funny part. <laughs> <laughs> he banged me. He popped me over the head with his guitar. He said, "Let's we do a plunk. plunking. Let's do a plunker. You know, we got to do a song. So we didn't know what we were going to do. So I looked at George. You know, I hit George over the head with the guitar. And next thing you know, we have uh, you know Sergeant Pepper. And you know, John and Paul were the primary songwriters. Peace and, and love, of course. They were the great. They were peace time. and love. They were peace. They were. 
which one was peace and which one was love. We switched back and forth. They were my brothers. Sometimes my brothers. John was love, sometimes John was peace, and then sometimes <laughs> Paul would be love. And then I'd say, hey, love, and they both turn around, and I'd bonk them over the head with the guitar, and that's how we wrote Octopus's Garden. <laughs> you came up with that song. Octopus's Garden. That was good. One time, that was you good. know, we were lost. <laughs> Spade, do you remember you made me laugh last time you were on? I was giving your intros, and... uh <laughs> I was like, he's blah blah blah. He won it. He's an Emmy Award winning uh, uh, actor. And I go, is that is that right, Spade? And you were right behind the curtain. You go, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> and that's it. That's that tone David uses. No, yeah. I do. Hey. There's a lot more going on with me. Um, <laughs> I can't be reduced to simple noises. And and yeah, I was the most complex comedian on the planet. Yeah, but no. I, <laughs> Thank you. I remember we went to that one, that that thing, that event for Howard one Stern. Time. Mm-hmm. Oh, we went to this event oh. for Howard with Howard Stern. Oh, I did stand up. Yeah, and I was like, oh, God, David, can you do that the bit, the skiing bit? And you're like, All right. You're like, Dude, I don't, I don't take requests. <laughs> But like, no, I did take requests and I did do it. <laughs> you did do it. No, and you that killed was fun. It. I was a ch- charity gig, and you were. Uh, that was real fun. It was scary because there was a lot of people. You crushed in a tiny that room. night. It was unbelievable. But Spade the skiing crushes, bit, man. What was in the skiing bit? Because they're like, your friends want to go on the Black Diamonds uh, trails, and you don't. You like, I don't right. want to. I'm afraid of that. I don't like. I, like, I want to go. They say it's easier to teach you if we all go down from the top. But it's, it's just to ditch me. So I say, no, I got the map. I want to go down the green ones. We're going to stop. We're going to start on Pop-Tart. And then they go, no, we're going down Devil's Ball Sack. Here we go. And I go, no, no, no. That's a hard one. We're going down. Listen, I mapped it out. We're going to go down Jelly Bean into Kitten Paw. uh, Kitten Paw. paw, And then uh, Puppy Love. And then Mother Goose. It's sort of challenging, but not overwhelming. Nope, Hitler's abortion. Here we go. Two by two, everyone line. I go, no, no, no. We're going down Hitler's abortion is the name of the yeah. trail. That one sounds hard. Yeah, that one. <laughs> Listen, it's, it's always good to work the word abortion into your act. It's God. always great. To, it's always put a stuff. smile on everyone's face. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but did you do Norm? Did you do impressions of Norm? Huh? Huh. Hmm? Hey. 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 Oh, Yeah. No, Norma, yeah. we, we, we did a gig, um, I think I told Dana this, or maybe I told Dennis, we did a gig, me, Dennis Miller, and Norm did a gig right before the pandemic, and he was like, David, he's always, he reacts too much to nothing, <laughs> you know what I mean, like you go, Norm, is it, uh, uh, you know, the show starts at 8, 8 o'clock? <laughs> <laughs> that is exactly him, yeah, yeah. 8 o'clock? <laughs> And then you go, there was an yeah, earthquake geez. in Oklahoma. He goes, when, today? I go, no, that's a big deal. There's an earthquake here. <laughs> eight o'clock? Uh-huh. Yeah. Eight, why hey, why yeah. would they do it at eight? I go, because it's the most obvious time in the world. I'm not show ready. Worst time. <laughs> yeah. That's like, like the worst time for people to do a stand-up, you know, eight, eight o'clock. Because, you know, you, you know my, like, my, my neck's all fucked up because of the flight there. And I go, fuck. And then Dennis goes, Spudley, why don't you go last? Like, it's a big favor. I go, and follow you two assholes. You guys kill. Uh, I think Dennis was technically the headliner. <laughs> For <laughs> sakes, I got the jet waiting on the termac. I'll do a cute 20, okay? Jim, Holdy he, and he, I are going Jim in Chicago. Chicago. He came, Dennis came on the show. He killed, by the way. He was so funny. I'll tell you the bit he did that made me laugh. But he was backstage. It was backstage. I was going to say hi to Dennis. Uh, Dennis Miller uh, and I, I put I, I never wear cologne but I put a little cologne on before I went to see him <laughs> not that much I did a little little like a little mist of like yeah. and then I dove under and it through I kind of yeah, yeah oh, dolphin sure. I dolphin dove under it I dove under it <laughs> dolphin under it yeah. dolphin under it gyrating movement and just nice. barely on so I go maybe he doesn't and I walked in I go of course Dennis of all people he goes gosh Jimmy Fallon smelling like Paco Rabanne over here <laughs> <laughs> fucking no. oh, Jimmy! Did you, did you pa- get the Paco reference? Raban. It just sounds yeah. funny. What is that from? Is it? Is it? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's from a, the fifties or it's something? From the eighties. Yeah. Jeez, I feel like Vinny Nicknock and the Detroit Lions. <laughs> <laughs> Vinny Nicknock. Vin, yeah, the uh, the onside. <laughs> I kicker. always had a joke yeah. that he never did, yeah. but he's like, "It's so quiet. It's like uh, the soundtrack to a Chuck Chaplin film." My. Uh, <laughs> Chuck Chaplin. Chucky That's Chaplin. That's a real joke or a no, fake no, one? No, no, no. It's a up. fake one that he never Chucky did. That sounds very Does close. Does anyone ever call you Jim? Can I going on Jim Fallon tonight? J- yeah, Jim. Jim, let me interesting story. I'm uh, I'm working on a new bit, okay? 
Uh, it's a, <laughs> it's a James, Dennis. <laughs> it's a James yeah. Bond film, okay? It's called uh, Bitcoin Finger. Okay? <laughs> Bitcoin Finger. Okay. He loves only risk. He loves <laughs> risk. That was his joke he did on the show. It made me laugh. Oh, really? Is that Bitcoin true? Bitcoin Finger? Yeah. Oh, my God. Bitcoin so Finger. Funny. He loves only risk is what he was singing. <laughs> He I was love singing. him, man. Oh, man. Oh, he's the funniest. We do I mean, him all the time. When he starts time. laughing in the middle of his bed, and he starts Christ. talking to you. Christ, now. cha-cha. Oh, I just do him just to soothe myself. Give me a topic, anything. I'll, I'll filter it through Dennis of anything. Oh, just uh, ice cream, uh, mint chocolate ice, chip. Mint chocolate chip. Okay, that's front-loaded, isn't it? All right. Can I have some mint <laughs> or do I have the chocolate? <laughs> They're competing with one another, all right? Last thing I need is a confusing scoop of ice cream, all right? How many chips do I yeah. fucking need? What, what, I'll, I'll, give, yeah. I'll give Jimmy a topic. All right, Jimmy, yeah. Yeah, uh, give me the, one. Gro- the grocery store. All right. Uh, okay. What, why do we have to go to the... the what, why does produce have its own section? <laughs> The produce section, okay? There's not like a cereal section. Cereal section's like, we don't get a section. We don't get a set. The produce gets its own section. Yeah. What am I, Gleeco? Yeah. What am I? What? What am I? I'll have Gleeco Christ the sakes. bag boy. Hey, Gleeco the bag boy. Why in Christ's sakes we got to have 600 different kinds of cereal, okay? Okay. 50 wasn't enough, all yeah. right? You I need guess, 29 uh, no, Fruit I want to pay <laughs> variations. <laughs> I want to pay an extra $2 for the organic apple. <laughs> Don't really see the difference. Hey, do I want to round up for Ukraine? Where's that fucking cash going? Come on, let's be honest. Jesus Christ, fine air Qantas, okay? Who's up front, a koala bear? Okay. Okay. All right, yeah, good. 29 hours yeah. to Melbourne. That's Paul Hogan nice in flight. first class going, that's not a knife, this is a knife. Yeah, just eat yeah. your, your freaking sandwich. Paul. Paul Hogan. I actually did. I submitted a thing at SNL that didn't get on, and it was uh, Alligator McGee. It was a takeoff mm. on <laughs> Crocodile Dundee or Alligator something. And everything was like bigger. He goes, he goes, that's not a refrigerator. This a refrigerator, and it's like 20 <laughs> times bigger. Just everything. That's not a lamp. This a lamp. You know, it's no, just that's like, not you know, a lamp. This didn't get a, on. This yeah, I, lamp. Did a bit, I did a bit once on the show with Schwarzenegger where we were doing QVC hosts, and uh, he, he, I wanted to talk about this new um, uh, slicer or something like that, and he wanted to talk about the chopper. We had like a mm-hmm. veggie chopper, and he's like, he got, it, it, all so he can go like, get to the chopper. <laughs> and, I go, <laughs> That's funny. and I was like, no, we got to still talk about, you know, we have this new uh, iron. It steams your clothes while it irons. Like, get to the chopper. <laughs> <laughs> and it totally tanked. It didn't really work. Get to the chopper. The you got to get he came on the show one time. I go, I go you smoke, smoke cigars, right? He's like, yeah, I love the cigars. <laughs> yeah, I go, wow. <laughs> so I go, go I, how do you smoke a cigar? Because I don't really know much about them. But isn't, don't you like, you have to like, don't you lick it? And then you you cut Ooh, it and right. lick it to yeah, the last one. Do and he goes, thing. Yeah. You don't lick you don't lick the cigar. What do you do? What do you do? You don't like you don't be licking the cigar. You don't do that. Listen to this guy with the licking. You don't like with the guy with the cigar. The guy the licking. He is so positive. Big guy, There is no problem in life with Arnold. That's why I love. I actually with one of my brothers. I say, what would Arnold do? You know, yeah. like if the if the if the air, if something's late, like the cab's late. That's all right. We walk a couple blocks. We see, look around. We see a better cab, and we actually get a faster ride to our destination. You know, he. Ne- he I love his positivity. We go up the mountain. We, there's a, probably we can make a zip line out of the vines and just zip line down to the yeah. place. That's right. We forgot our skis, so we get the wood from the forest. We chop it. We make wood and skis. We strap them together <laughs> with the pantyhose or whatever we have, and we go down the mountain. We and take the spanks. We him. take the spanks off and inflate our spanks to make a hot air balloon, <laughs> so that we can fly to the destination. We get off much faster and better and we, for the environment. And we give rides for children. The children go, and we make lots of money. In all these things. <laughs> oh, where's he going? Spade, he, he took a break. Jimmy, can you remember the catchphrase we had when I hosted in like 1999? You, you were... I know what it is. This is why I knew Jimmy and I had the same sense of humor. Because that was a running gag of me being cocky, uh, you know, pawns. <laughs> so the whole idea was... 
And the show was doing fine, but the, all week long, I, I would just say, in reference to the current SNL, so long, golden era. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Farewell, Emmy <laughs> Good nominations. <laughs> Good, so, goodbye. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Hit show, so long, memorable characters. <laughs> anyway. Goodbye, Emmy nomination. <laughs> but you laugh so hard at that. Arrivederci, <laughs> Peabody Awards. Farewell. <laughs> no, what was the one we, you did this the kind of redneck character last time you were on with Mike Myers. Red Rednecky. Red Rednecky, the redneck comedian. I actually have a couple in case you asked for that. Oh, God. Mm-hmm. That's my favorite yeah, thing. I'm Red Redneck, the redneck comedian. My, mm. I, I said, Daddy, what's for dinner? He said, shit on a sing- shingle. I said, this <laughs> Day just keeps getting better and better. Come and get some. <laughs> Come, get the, Come and get some. Come and get some. Yeah. I went to the doctor. He said, we got to amputate your left foot. I said, can I keep my right foot? He said, sure. I said, Come and get some. <laughs> So no matter That's how it? He's That's positive. That's a joke. <laughs> my, mama, he my mama said, he what do you want to do with your life? I said, I don't know. Live in a shack and drink beer all day. Mama said, don't ever dream too big, Red, because you always end up disappointed. Come on, geese home. Come on, geese home. It's all about the come on, geese home. Yeah, you got to get to it. Don't make the joke too long because everyone's waiting for come on, geese home. Oh, it's like sometimes they're not jokes. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes they're not really jokes. The first one was kind of a joke. I made my sister only because mama turned me down. Come on, geese home. There you <laughs> go. Like that. We're back. Uh, okay, I'll give you one Carson. One Carson because you like that one too. Yeah, I love it. Johnny Carson getting pulled over for drunk driving, 1972. Oh, sorry, officer. I didn't know I was swerving. I had two strawberry boom booms at the Hickory Hut. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Come no, on, sorry, sorry, didn't I? I was swerving. I, I had a, I had two mandolinis. No, no, I, I, no. I had two <laughs> at mandolinis. It's a, yeah, it's at mandolinis. That's two somethings at somebody's, right? Strawberry so like, boom boom tomato. I had two. Um, I had two. I had two, uh, I had two rhubarb. I had a silly goose up with a twist. <laughs> I had a purple nurple. I had a silly goose over at Matt. I had two silly gooses at mandolinis. I. <laughs> Kate Mandolini's. That's Remember a real Kate place. Mandolini's? Oh, yeah. Chris Rock mm. took me there uh, years ago and uh, paid for my meal, and uh, I, I had no Jimmy. money. Jimmy. Yeah. Jimmy. Do Chris Rock. You do him. Yeah. Uh, what? Uh, uh, what? 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 What are you going to get to order? You got to eat, or you got to just stand there? What? What, <laughs> what are you going to. Why would you even give me a menu? <laughs> just eat just give me what people eat <laughs> what <laughs> something like that I like when he goes I used to bust him for repeating everything he goes Obama and then everyone laughs then he goes President Obama they laugh again he goes Barack <laughs> oh I go let's go dude your th- what your, is it your act is only 20 minutes is what you said yeah him. exactly yeah, yeah. Barack he- Obama <laughs> Obama the president yeah. The president. Black guys won't eat the pussy. Black guy <laughs> will not eat your pussy. Or the white guy will. Oh, the white guy, he will. <laughs> so, uh, that's not even his act. I just made that up. Know how you, to suck. Oh, God. We're getting blue now. Uh, right. How about uh, all right, Sandler? Could you. Everyone does Sandler. No, you. No, you do. It. I, I just. Did went, you went, audition with oh, wait, Sandler? Let me do my. Every time Adam is mentioned on this podcast, I just go Thabathu. Yeah, so, yeah. So I just did it. So he'll be hearing this Thabathu. Oh, but you have the best Sandler. You did him on SNL. Speaking, I of did it in my topic. audition because I loved it because his his impression are like three impressions in one three levels. Yeah, he 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 he, uh, he, he, he used to do that. That guy, you know, yeah, I, I was talking to my mo- my mother the other day, and uh, you know, my my mom would always say, and then he then he goes the second verse, like she would always say, uh, hey, hey, why don't you take the laundry down? He said, hey, who did that? Who did? And my dad would say, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> that oh the my god, that level. is so fucking great. Yeah, that <laughs> is oh. That the is casual r- Sandler old stand-up voice is yes. good. Old Sandler, that, like the casual. I, I, that I, is a brilliant I, observation. I, I remember I, I was buzzing into my grandma's uh, apartment. Yeah. And I pressed the buzzer and she said, right, "Who is this? Who is there?" And I said, "It's, it's Adam. <laughs> you, it's Adam, your grandson." <laughs> Who? Charles Manson? <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> Charles Manson. <laughs> oh, I don't want you to come in. I don't want Charles Manson. <laughs> I don't want Charles Manson. I don't want you. I don't want Charles Manson. 
<laughs> oh yeah, I had a oh, Vicks. My God, that's great. Uh, uh, I, I had love Vicks. That. My I was sick. My mom was rubbing that Vicks uh, cold stuff on my chest, and then our eyes connected. And I go, "Hey, mom, we're just friends, right?" <laughs> That's a good bit. Oh my goodness! That's a that's his bit, but I can't get his voice. You're doing the voice. Right? How do you do? How do you do, Smigel? Smigel's close to Sandler. Mm, Smigel, interesting. Because he, he he's like uh, Jamie. Jamie, he's very. Jamie, he's kind of like Sandler. Very too. low key. Yeah, yeah, very low key. Let me hear. I it. was thinking. Uh, well, I was. Uh, you want to? You want to try that? That's just, that is good. You, you right? He says laughing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Little whispering. Uh, hey, uh, oh, here's my Smigel, Jimmy. When I'm pitching him, when I was at SNL, and I'd pit, go in his little three foot wide office where they're writing killer sketches. Yeah. And I'd knock and go, hey, do you want to help me with this? And he goes, uh, what is it? And he has a nervous laugh because he doesn't want to do my sketch. So I go, it's about a guy who does this, this. And he goes, uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I, I don't think I could do that. I don't, I don't <laughs> think I like that one. <laughs> Very <laughs> low key. In the nicest way, yeah. laughing at he's you. He's so nice, but he's kind of laughing nervously. Like, how do I tell yeah, him? Yeah, it's and yeah, he would just look yeah. off into I space and start that. laughing. You ever seen him do that? Yeah. Where he's just a lo- he's in the room and he's just staring at, at at the wall or something and laughing, looking up. I, I love he's making him laugh though, because when you do yeah. make him laugh, I made him laugh once. He never put it in a sketch, but it was like, how does uh, Dracula? What if Dracula was a comedy writer and he's like. Uh, judging the the, the laughs, so it's like uh, he's like uh, ah, 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 ah. and then you tell another joke. He goes, ah, I'm wah, ha. <laughs> the blah, the blah, blah, blah. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. I, mean, I, yeah. I like the uh, the other one. What do you do? The moi, ah, 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 ah. And they go, how about this joke? He goes, moah, this is That's moah. Huh? It's like judging that. But I was at once. We did it. He does those charity things. Uh, they're really great. Uh, Night of Too Many Night Stars, too many stars yeah, for, for, for autism. autism. Mm-hmm. And I did a I did a bit with Tina Fey, and we were in uh, we're at Radio City or someplace, and it had an orchestra pit in the front. And uh, he came out, and um, he we had a laptop with him, and he's you know he's got his glasses on. I go, uh, uh, what are you doing? Uh, what's up? What are you doing, Smigel? And he goes, Oh, I'm uh, I'm changing all the uh, I'm changing all the fucks to shits because. We're airing on Comedy Central, so we can't say dirty words. So I'm changing all the, the fucks mm-hmm. to uh, shits. Or I go, uh, oh, cool, <laughs> or whatever. So uh, I'm doing our bit with me and Tina, and I see Smigo backing up, and he's typing in this thing, and he backs up, and he falls into the orchestra. No. Pit. He falls like six feet down into oh. the I go, holy crap. I run over. I go, Smigo, are you okay, dude? What's up? Are you? He's, he looked like a, like a Jerry Lewis would look mm. like if he fell. It was like a like an out, like a, like a chalk, chalk outline. A chalk yeah. outline of a body. His glasses were broken and the laptop was in three p- pieces and I ran down. I wow. go, dude, oh my God, are you okay, buddy? And he goes, <laughs> without missing a beat, he goes, uh, change all the fucks to shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that's too funny <laughs> by the way what a dumb note like no one's offended by shit like that was his last words you know wow that was i'm Must. gonna laugh about that even more later that's gonna Promise. go through my head today it's so funny man. That's that's so he was- robert he is so fucking obsessed i went to a concert with lauren we went to go see uh sting and paul simon and uh, and it was a it was an amazing concert. So they're playing together, Paul Simon and Sting. And Paul Simon, you know, is probably in his seventies, I think. And so he just looks mm-hmm. like Paul Simon in his seventies. And Sting is next to him, and he's just jacked. Yeah, he's got he muscles, is muscles fit, and his, yeah. he's got like a t shirt pulled down, like a John Barbados <laughs> yeah. kind of wrinkled. And yeah. He's a badass, and he just yeah. looks. And he's playing bass, and he's just got veins coming out of his muscles. Yeah, yeah he is And fit. so I, I came in, I went and got two beers and a couple hot dogs. And I gave it to Lauren. I go, how old is uh, Sting? <laughs> and Lauren's like, well, he's probably 63 or something. I go, I don't think I ever want to be in that good of shape when I'm 63. And without missing a beat, Lauren goes, uh, I don't think you have any problem. <laughs> <laughs> you go, no, you go, oh, wait, what's he saying? I'm sorry. He goes, uh, I, I don't think that'll be a problem. <laughs> so, so I'm trying to think. I go, I don't ever want to be that. I don't want to be that in that kind of shape when I'm 62. Goes, it's not I, something you have to worry about. I, yeah, I don't think you have to worry about that. It do you, have, do you have other Lorne-isms? Because I've done some on this podcast, but he is he's a philosopher. <sighs> and I don't know sometimes if, if they're original because they're so brilliant or he gets them from elsewhere. But Do you remember you would do, Danny, you did uh, Guess Which Paul? Oh, 
He's like, well, I was having dinner the other oh, night yeah. with, Paul. with oh. Paul. Paul. Guess which Paul? Uh, that would be Paul McCartney. <laughs> Dana. Wrong. Paul Provenza. Uh, well, what's the, you know, that joke, how do you get to Lauren's house? What's the directions to Lauren? Lauren's house? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Uh, you go up to Main Street and then you go right, 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 right. That's funny. All right? <laughs> Jimmy, do Never you feel like you're Lauren's best water. friend? <laughs> do I feel like I'm Lauren's best friend? I, out of all the SNL people, you've worked longer with him if you had SNL and then the two late shows. And now, so you've worked yeah. closely with him yeah. as long as any, but 25 years or something. 20, yeah, he's the know. great. Yeah, I would say he definitely well, we is all love him. my best <laughs> yeah. friend. But I mean, he, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have gotten late night. Uh, NBC didn't really want me. They wanted someone else. God, and, that's crazy. And uh, I remember when, when I he heard you were available, me. and they were thinking, "How that? That's so fucking perfect." I was like, "If you felt like doing it, because yeah, well, of you your know, we were leaving. So I was huge. leaving SNL, and then Conan had signed something where he was going to get the Tonight Show in like six years or something, five years, yeah, something Which like was that. Such it was a, a fucked I, up thing. I never heard yeah. of that happening. But they didn't anyways, want. They wanted to keep Jay, but not lose Conan. That was the compromise. Yeah. yeah. So I remember. I was leaving SNL and Lauren goes, well, do you ever want to maybe host a show? You know, you could take over for Conan in five years. And I go, I don't know if I would do that. I mean, I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to be, you know, big Hollywood star. <laughs> He's like, but I'm like, <laughs> I'm going to go do movies or whatever. And he's like, uh, and Tina Fey was in the office and she was like, I think you'd be great at that. You're like Irish and you like to go to bars and talk to people and you <laughs> talk to everyone. That'd be right up that's your alley. That's all it takes. Yeah. That's and, all it and, takes. All, and all the stuff that you, you got to do on, on the talk shows that weren't totally SNL yeah. friendly. They were just different long dance numbers and we'll go yeah. over those in a minute. But, but it was like, but so, so then I go and I try movies. They didn't work. Uh, and uh, Same, same. And then, no. I'll tell you something that Sandler had said to me because I had Clean Slate and Trapped in Paradise and I know you had two as well. And I had things I was developing with Smigel and other people. But Sandler at one point said to me, saddles up and you could do it better. He goes, Carvey, uh, they don't, they meaning the people making movies that aren't us, uh, they don't really know how to do it. They, they, they don't know, they don't really know how to make it, where to put the camera, what to be funny, you know? Wow. I, I never forgot they, that. They they, if you, yeah, because you said something once I found fascinating, the idea of you get to the set at 5.30 and you do the thing and the blocking and the master shot, by four, 10 hours later, you've said the line 150 times, 200 times, and now you're going to say it for the movie. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's, it's not, not funny. even English. It's it not even English. Sound like I go, him. dude, I peaked at like 10 in the morning. Yeah. You want me to be funny now? I'm so exhausted. I'm like, I can't be funny. And like, then it's, uh, movies just weren't my thing at all. But then, so then Lauren, uh, I go, he goes five years later and he goes, uh, remember I asked you that thing? I go, yeah, I go, well, let me ask my wife, because now I'm married. So I go, okay. So I asked Nancy, and she's like, you got to do it. You got to do it. Uh, let's, I mean, look at the list. I mean, it's Letterman, Conan, and you. That's a great list. You have to do it, even if it doesn't work. So she was like, I'll move to New York. And so uh, I said, yeah, I want to do it. And then NBC was like, yeah, we're not sure we want to be in the Jimmy Fallon business. Oh, right. Really? It, what the fuck? After all your work. SNL stuff and your talk show appearances? When yeah. did you host the Video Music Awards? Because I thought you did a great job. I go, oh, this is a whole new thing. Like, you were perfect for that. Yeah, that and was... you were playing your guitar. 2004 or something like that, or 2002 or something like that. One of those... Was that during SNL or right after? That was during SNL. Oh, no. That was right after SNL. That's what I was leaving to, to do movies and stuff. Because that was like a good all. But you were you were a smash do. right away, right? Yeah. With when you got on that late night show, I mean, pretty much, right? Well, it, it worked. Yeah, I mean, it, it kind of. Yeah, it was smash a was a strong word, Dana. Yeah, <laughs> smash is a strong word. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll say stuff that I say about Jim Jimmy when he's not around. There's never been anyone with your range and your your you're so uh, versatile talent wise. There's no one. No, no, I'm going back to Steve Allen. And then also your your likability is is a twelve, yeah. and then your interview skills where you make it all about the person, you know, you're just yeah. like Carson. So I thought you were like made out of a factory, and then tall and handsome. <laughs> I was like, and he can play guitar, yeah. and he does Dylan, and he can do Neil Young better than Neil Young, and you yeah. two couldn't make it tonight, and he they think 
they're the roots and Jimmy are better than you two. It's like it goes on and on. So yeah, I felt you were made out of some kind of German factory. We should make the greatest talk show host in six foot two check. Voices yes, check. Likeability check. Let him go. Release him. Dancing. I heard from somebody, a little birdie told me that when you and Justin Timberlake are out there doing all your choreography with the choreographer that no he can't you you get it in one take <laughs> like this woman does like 10 steps and you're like no you can do that too so no. that's my mic drop on complimenting jimmy Ooh, fallon i'll take the mic drop from danny carver <laughs> and yeah. jimmy's willing to travel to coney island for bits that's right because when they do like i always tell them when i come to new york i go so you do the show which is already like a beating just a long day and you have to be very present and focused and we're gonna do this we're gonna, we gotta rehearse this bit and then sometimes after the show you travel somewhere and pre-tape something yeah it's like j-lo wants to go on the jungle gym and we got to go to you know <laughs> long island for this bit and then you got to do bumper cars with chris Jesus, hemsworth but you gotta it, but do it, it. 30 years yeah. in, Letterman stopped doing that, right? When you get to hit 30, you know, Christ's sakes, into that fourth decade, I think uh, it's a hard out at 5.30, all right? I mean, that that's... How are you pacing yourself, I think is the question, right, David? Yeah. Yeah, I don't... I think, you know, it, it, there's something about this that's fun, that, that's different than SNL is because it's every day. So, you know, SNL, if you did a sketch and it was in a tank, you had a week. You had to wait. Yeah. You have yeah. a week to be depressed. <laughs> you yeah. know, and you're like, yeah. oh, that was awful. It's so embarrassing. This one, if I do a, a bit that tanks, I have another show the next day and I go, oh, I'll re recover tomorrow. Well, you also have full say, like at SNL's read through, then you're crossing your fingers and you get on like a fifth of what you hand in. And if you're there, you like something, it's in. You don't like something, it's out. That's yeah. kind of, that's kind of good. At least you go with your strength. You go, I can... I think I can make this one work. We got know, great writers. We're in a good groove yeah. right now. We got some great writers here and good producers. It's like it's like oh, it's super fun. It's like you know when it's when it's really fun. It's like kind of camp, almost yeah. like summer camp. Everyone's together, mm -hmm. and I got a bit, and I got a bit, and I got a thing, and it's like that's exciting for me. And so every day I come in and you go like oh that that's a, such a dumb idea, but I love it. Let's do it because it, it'll make me laugh. Right. And when you go on the show, Dana knows. Uh, for the audience <laughs> you're you. you're very uh, helpful so you know you're it's a fun atmosphere you get backstage you come back bullshit a second and uh and then you go out there and if i'm stumbling through a bit you're jumping in helping and making sure everything works so all that stuff helps because yeah uh you know you want you want everyone to look good and the show keeps going but the show keeps going still 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 so I guess it's just up to you to figure out one day if it's just too Jimmy much. Jimmy is the only, I, I, and I've I've loved all my hosts, Letterman, everybody, uh, Conan, yeah. all of them. Jimmy is the only one who I literally could go out and throw anything at him. Like I said, any accent, any bit, <laughs> he would just start laughing and just go right at it. So yeah. that that's it's that fun. is sing singularly unique. And the next time I'm in New York, which I got to come out soon because I just want to hang out with you, I'm going to surprise you with something. <laughs> Don't tell me what it is and don't tell me what I'm you're doing. I'm not going to tell you because I, I might decide when I'm behind the curtain when you're introducing me. But I'll, yeah, I'm we, gonna, we, I'm I did that to Jerry. We had Jerry Lewis on the show and I did that to him and he didn't really roll with it. It was, it was weird. He was like, wait, oh. you want to do this now? I'm like, I'm like, let's have the roots play jazz and you do the jazz bit where like you're, Oh, you open oh, your mouth and you point oh, at that things. Thing? Oh my God, that's which brilliant. Which is brilliant. I go, let's just play with it. See if it's fun. And he goes, and he goes, uh, he goes, yeah. He goes, you know, it's so weird to get, getting older. I haven't been in the city in so long. Um, I actually, you know, he, he, when he came out, he started doing like old Jerry Lewis voice. So he was like, I, 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 first time I was, you know, and he started. Do, wow. It's really, <laughs> really interesting. I was like, cool. And then he goes, uh, but I, I'm older now and I'm in, so I'm taking the subway and I'm on the subway and, uh, and he goes, mm. um, and I see this kid with dyed hair. He has a uh, spiked right here. He has a red a green a blue hair and these piercings everywhere uh and he's just look and i'm just looking at him and this kid goes uh uh what are you looking at you got a problem i go oh, wow uh and i go what'd you say to him he goes i, I said uh, no just uh, 20 years ago i had sex with the parrot i think you might beat my son <laughs> He was like setting me up for a joke the whole time. <laughs> wow. That's kind of funny though. I felt That's bad for him. Funny. I thought he was getting picked on on the subway and then he was just <laughs> it setting was up this joke. Uh, really it was dark. You it thought, crushed, oh. it crushed, it crushed. Oh. It was so funny. He's like, no, I just had sex with the parrot 20 years ago. I think you might be my son. 
<laughs> That's a good weird bit though, and I actually like it's out of left field. Yeah, I, I love the history. I had dinner accidentally with the ingenue in Cinder Fella. This we're going back to Jerry Lewis in the mid sixties, where he is uh, writing, directing, producing his movies. Yeah, and um, it was, and then so I did watch some of it where he does this long dance in, on the soundstage and it really is avant-garde it's 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 no wonder the uh french love him it was i appreciated it so much more i watched it like six months ago i was like damn so that was is that kind cinderella of brilliant. the one where he's getting in the argument he's he's the boss and he's has yes. a cigar and he's yelling yes. to the jazz yeah it's the, it's the best thing it's unbelievable and 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 it's it's it would might have been called self indulgent then, but now it's like it just keeps going and going and going. And it just it's it's brilliant, really. really I brilliant. swear, I thought Sandler was talking about doing a remake of Cinderella in the old old days. It sounds kind of up his alley. He can he can say that's true or not, but I remember. Why did I hear that? I think he really just thought that's Jared Adams was funny. Spade, are you Adam's working on a new? Are you doing a new Netflix uh, movie? You know, that's a great question, Jimmy. I'm glad that when I just texted you that, you got it. Um, Because <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know what? The Wrong Missy was unbelievably funny. It was fantastic. I loved it. You know, And everyone I recommend, you, everyone, I'm like, dude, you want to laugh? Watch The Wrong Missy. You won't even believe how funny. And everyone's like, it's the funniest movie ever. The Wrong Missy we stumbled upon. And I'm finally, there was a rumor at the beginning you were going to ask us questions, but I'm glad it's finally happening. Uh, the <laughs> Wrong Missy. <laughs> no rumor. <laughs> There's a rumor when you were like, I want to ask you guys it, stuff. I'm hey like, man, oh, that good. movie did 200 billion minutes or however they keep track. I mean, it was yeah, insane. You know, <laughs> like a billion, we did a billion, billion seconds. Out. Three billion and they seconds. And they go, it's the number second. one movie in the world. And you're like, I can't believe it. They're like, um, we can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. And then like for a week straight, they're like, number one in the world, number one in the world. And I'm like, who was the uh, actress anyway. that played Missy? Lauren Lapkus, and she's great. Moly, she was funny. Yeah, Jim Carrey s level. Yes, yeah. yes, of, like of just, just yeah. enough, just enough to be so funny and not yeah. annoying. It was like, yeah, brilliantly likable. done. She should have uh, won an Oscar. She should have won. And a, really, a, I'm a honestly, funny. you know, Jimmy, I was thinking that because when Tiffany Haddish was up for an Oscar for Road Trip, was it? I was thinking, oh, it is actually possible. Like, yeah. Lauren could have been up for that because I mean it's a dark, it's R rated and stuff, but she was so good and so out of the blue. I've never seen anything so like funny. it. I was and so the movie impressed. Did so well that I was like, why? I, it wouldn't surprise me. It would have surprised me because that stuff doesn't happen, and it did not. Who who, who directed great. who directed that? What team was that? That was Tyler Spindell. That was uh, Ad, from Happy Madison. Yeah, I know Adam's him. nephew. Yeah, he's good. He did. Uh, he's doing a new one with Pierce Brosnan right now. But I would do another Wrong Missy. I actually meeting someone today about a movie with Lauren because Lauren, um, yeah, like, say, do, a, do a sequel wrong or Missy. Well, we're like bogey and Bacall <laughs> at this point. I feel um, which one's bogey. I don't know. I don't know who <laughs> those people are. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was like uh, an old, an old, uh, uh Laurel and Hardy yeah, bit. They used to go like, no, me and the boss are just like this. And he crossed her fingers and he goes, which one's you? He's like, well, at any point, like, well, this one's. Like, <laughs> oh, just get finger. on the thing. Yeah, across uh, Which uh, finger is the butt? Oh, yeah, get out of here. By the way, enough about me, but I did like that. Thank you, Jimmy. No, no problem. Uh, the also when you guys were talking about Neil Young, I had a confession that you said people have different levels of their voice. When I was listening to uh, Guns and Roses, who a lot of you people know, it's a new band. The uh, number Guns one Roses, song. The number one song. <laughs> When Number he one would do with a uh, butt. Guns and Roses. What, what did he do that Guns old song? Guns and where Roses. Was, Guns. <laughs> Mama, take this badge. Oh, yeah. Uh, I thought it was two people singing. Oh, Guns and Roses with Welcome to the Jungle. Because he goes low and then he goes higher. <laughs> you two Appetite. fucking fools. Listen to my story. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Dave. Checking in and revive the boss. Bruce Springsteen, a man and his guitar. A man who likes to call his guitar his own. And here he is. He writes, Dear born, Casey, Dear hey, Casey, can I ever play guitar like Bruce Springsteen? And the answer is yes. Keep your feet on the ground and keep reaching for the stars. Dear Casey, I'm a hey, bit of a fuck up. Springsteen. Is there any chance for me in show business? Of course there is. He writes, Dear Casey, I'm a complete dick to most people I meet. <laughs> 
How can I be a nicer person? Dear Casey, I read Playboy just for the articles. Dear Casey, <laughs> this may be off subject, but I wake, I whack off 35 times a day. Dear Casey, um, I put a Fitbit on my left hand and I get no steps. I put Fitbit on my right hand, I get 500 million. What am I doing with my right hand? Dear Casey, my socks tend to droop. How can I hold them up and keep them from drooping? Writes Ben Dear Swiller Casey, from Tallahassee, Florida. I put my girlfriend's scrunchie around my dick and balls. Is there oh, an easy on, way I'm to get off? I'm blue today. Well, Spain, I don't care. What do you do? I don't care. What are you what doing, are you doing to me? What is this, a corporate game? Hey, it's this guy. <laughs> over here, this guy. Over there. Over here. No. You know, anyway, get over so, here. Get out of yeah, here. You get, yeah, we go. Enough get of the Get over blue. here first, and then get out of here. <laughs> Get, get over. the fuck out of here. Get over here. Hey, get over here. Get out of here. All right, David, finish your story. Now I feel bad. Nobody gives a fat fuck about my stupid story about Axl Rose, who's a- You thought it was two who, people. Thank you, Jimmy. No. You you were, you trapped that story. <laughs> but that was the one where he goes, Mama, take this Mama, badge Mama, take me. this badge from me. Yeah. Hey, Mama, goes, wow. Well, give me welcome to the jungle. You got to be able to Knocking on do heaven's door. Mama, he goes, take this badge from me. Yeah. No, he goes, Knock, 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 knock. knock, knock. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thought that was a different person. Yeah. Does oh, you'd fucking did. follow the story. You're, I so, told you, you're Arizona. I hate your guts. You Arizona Who guys. Who are you talking to, me or Dana? No, I like you, Jimmy. You seem cool. Thanks. We're supposed to have dinner tonight. <laughs> you uh, know what, Dana? When you come a celebrity to hangout. Ooh. Oh, yeah, spot. we are going to go to dinner. Me and Dude. Dana, we're cheating on you, Jimmy. Oh, uh, is, is fly on the wall being a hit just changing you guys? Or you act, <laughs> do you act different now? And, we're cockier. Yeah. Yes. You are? And you go to yeah. hot spots yes. now? LA hot spots? We go to hot spots, C and B scene. I'm a man about town. Woo! Making a move in my Here 60s. I come. <laughs> they go, oh, you're old. getting famous. <laughs> no one can do what he's doing. Check his You're Wikipedia. getting famous oh. about talking about a show that made you famous. I'm like, he didn't mm-hmm. fade. He's oh. as sharp as ever. Almost oh. 80. Oh. I listen to you and Smartless. They're my favorite podcast. Oh, yeah. oh, what about Clueless? That's David's new podcast. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I like to go back to the scrunchie around the balls. That was a real question. All right. Do I get I it? Is it easy to get off? Or or my dedicate. wife loves this podcast. And oh, she's, she doesn't like it to go too blue. She doesn't mind people say, fuck, motherfucker, shit, but, you know, deep downtown gynecological type stuff okay. and balls and dick Steep maybe it's down, not a favorite downtown uptown round bound round down down i'm doing george carlin <laughs> oh yeah later oh, george, yeah. later george carlin george drop the g and you have orange <laughs> that was why are there fun. no blue fruits there's no blue shoes fruits. You everyone can needs shoes upload up down download big Jumbo shoes shrimp big shoes little shoes brown garage shoes yellow sale. shoes girl shoes boy shoes <laughs> everyone needs shoes Boots garage Leather sales. shoes. They're not selling the garage, honey. <laughs> we're selling the garage. The king of lists. He was. He was. Uh, had an incredible. He memorized mind the list, and he would just yeah. Crush Blueberry the whole. yogurt, strawberry yogurt, vanilla yogurt. <laughs> <laughs> If he'll shut at the, the fuck up, I'll at the fuck. end it was like that. It was like there's no blue food, and you go, what about blueberries? And he goes, okay, there's one. <laughs> I waited on George Carlin at the Holiday Inn in 1976. Oh, I've heard. Tell Jimmy. I brought and him I a bowl. And we, and we liked it. We I liked loved it. it. No. <laughs> I <laughs> waited on George Carlin in 1956. <laughs> and he was doing hippy dippy weatherman. He's a hippy, hippy dippy weatherman. He's not a normal weatherman. He's a hippy do weatherman. <laughs> Tomorrow's forecast hot. <laughs> Tonight's forecast dark. <laughs> Tomorrow's forecast far out, man. Far Wasn't out, that man. He's the, greatest, he's the greatest guy ever, man. What about a guy who talks like this? What's well, your latest? Most of my impressions are that. I just go I nasal. Like, I was Pat O'Brien. I did Everybody. Pat O'Brien like that. I did a <laughs> yeah. Pat O'Brien's great. DJ. Everything was this voice. I would do a welcome back. You're listening to Z105, everybody. And we're here with, yeah, yeah. with the great uh, David Spade. David, we're just talking back. I, I, I wanted to talk about your movie. We'll be right back on the Z. Z105. And then you go to com- they go to commercial and you go, uh, David, thanks for being here, man. We're going to talk about your movie. Uh, I was so funny on Netflix. Uh, all right, here we go. We're coming right back. And we're back here. Z105. I'm here with David Spade. Hey, David. I did not like your movie. That was <laughs> terrible. And you go, wait, you just told that's, me before. That's, 
That's basically how you do Regis film, but you got to go there if you're going to do oh. Regis. Honest to God, is there anyone better than Jimmy Fallon? No, I, He's I, very I, nasal. I, I, I have stolen your Regis film, but I do your Regis film, but when I do it, and I do Dana yelling like Regis film. That's it. You got it. Damn, uh, I got I, one. Jimmy. Yeah, go. Where, before I got to go in a little bit, but Jimmy, um, we have a hard hour. Uh, no, Jimmy, when you go on these radio shows, like they go, uh, uh, Dana, like you're doing a gig in that town, and they go, mm-hmm. you got you got to call into the zoo. Oh crew. yeah, yeah, Tommy and, and go, the yeah. ball. So yeah. they go like this. Hey, David, we got thirty seconds. Okay, we're gonna put you on hold, and when we pick up, it's gonna be Jim. Bobo, Zip Zip, a talking zebra, a Bitcoin, a robot, and a cockatoo, a okay? You'll know who everyone is. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. And you go, wait, what am I, what's going on? I was a, I was a DJ. I was a, hey, see if you guys think this is funny. It, it's not, but I was a DJ in college and I would go, I go, it's, it's, um, it's 313 in the city, 211 on the Dane Rock. It was always a different time than the real time. It's 4 o'clock in the city, 3 p.m. on the Dane Rock. I don't know what. Makes that was no my sense. moniker. Yeah, well, it's, it's not bad. That's your, and it, it didn't stick. I like it. It didn't yeah, stick. Because you're on your own stick. planet. You're on your own thing when you're listening to Dane Rock. Dane Rock, I know. I know. You're, you're, well, I like it. It's hey, 3 p.m. It's 3 p.m. in Sacramento, but uh, it's uh, uh, 12 on the gi- in the Jimmy Rock. On the Jimmy, uh, Jimmy on the Jim Rock. Rock. I used to get just Tommy and the Bull. It's Tommy and the Bull. You know, you wake up at 6 a.m. playing some shitbox club in Mississippi. You know, oh, Tommy dude. and the Bull in the eye. You know. Yeah, the Come Grease on. Man. Remember the Grease Man? Oh, I remember Grease. The Grease. What about like is dear? Never pay for a woman's lunch. All right. Um, Jimmy, I'll ask Jimmy. you one last question. David, like, do you have no. one last question? Does he get one last one? Okay, you got one minute. I was going to summarize his whole appearance. Oh, yeah. Danny usually gets one last question, then you Go summarize. Go Dana. What was it like on you Saturday know when, when you're leaving? When you're, when you, that's the worst question. Did you, do you ever, um, do you, ever uh, you ever listen to you know, Howard Stern always uh, ends his oh, interviews yeah. the best where he's like, all right, well, we've done it all. We, we've, said, we've said it all. Right. No, Jimmy. I love how you've done it all, Na- David. David, you've done you've done it all. You've done it all. So we said it all. You've done it all. It's great. And you said we said it all. You know you're getting pushed out. You're the pushing door. out the door. They're like that's the end of the interview. We've all right. I like wow. his laugh when he goes. Poof. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even do. I used to do an impression of him. Now it's just uh, lost. That was pretty good. Can I do my Trump not saying anything for you? Yeah. Okay, we'll end on There's that. There's no subject. Frankly, let me tell you, you're going to be seeing a lot of it that I could tell you. I mean, when you look at it, and it didn't work out so great for some of those people, you're seeing it all over the place. Many people are saying, we don't want that. We're not people who do that, okay? So when you look at it, what they're doing, look at all of it. People are very disappointed because it's a terrible deal, a really bad deal. We're going to be doing something very soon, and you're going to be seeing a lot of it. You're going to be happy like you wouldn't believe. He literally has no subject matter <laughs> he's not talking about anything oh it's anything. so good that could fit into anything <laughs> that's his genius wait do you have one do you have one come on do you have one question sorry dana how was what was it like so. on saturday night live all that right so our, david that, do you want to sum it no i would say what are you happiest about when people stop you at an airport or on the street and uh, when they mention a specific thing throughout your long yeah. career which is the one that kind of go oh you know that one you like that one huh yeah, I got. You may not have that at the tip of your brain. Oh well, like t- cowbell is the sketch everyone asks about. Oh you know. yeah, that one. Which by Let's the way, let's not sleep on cowbell. One of the best of all time. That was not. I almost didn't make it to air. That was not supposed to make it to air. It was in the. It was in the. What do you call that? That the, 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 the death space. one. The before was, before good nights. Yes, it's in the death one. It was in the death with, space with Christopher Walken. Yep. Oh, with wow. Christopher Walken, and Will Ferrell, and uh, and and it was it was that it aired probably right at the end of the show, like probably ten to oh, one, five to one. Yeah. yeah, it was five to one. It was a weird sketch, and everyone was on fire, dude. Everyone was being super funny, and it was like my third or fourth show on uh, on the show. And I remember, wow, that, that's where I got the reputation for laughing and breaking in the scene because it was just everyone was. Will Ferrell was so funny and Catan and Horatio and then Walken was doing like an impression of Walken. He wasn't even doing yeah. it himself. He was, you know, we got to what that do that. You know, he was yeah. like, it was I got like, a hankering and, for more cowbell. Yeah. And it, it started, it was the room brilliant. started shaking. Yeah. Do you know, you yes. know when, when the room, when SNL yeah. like shaking? Yeah. And, it's hooked. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I well, was there that night when that you were. was, I, I did a guest spot or something and I remember it 
I call it levitated the room, like went to another yeah. level. Yeah. What, what sketch of yours crushed the hardest that 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 um, levitated this, the room? That I was doing. Harry? I was doing. Yeah, Head Head Harry with Harry the dog is, is up mo- there. I was there for that. I was doing Church Lady with Joe Montana oh, and Walter Payton. A lot of sexual innuendo. I wasn't my proudest moment, but it. This old guy came up to me afterwards. You know, I've been I'm in charge of sound. I've been looking at the meters for decades, and I never seen them peak like that. Wow! <laughs> and I said, "Come on, get on." Oh, right. Spade, what how was about your you? Killer? What was your crusher? Yeah. Bye bye. Too many to mention. Uh, no, uh, oh, bye bye. Also, um, and you are bye bye. Was probably the one that we only did once or twice that that had the most lasting effect. And then, uh, oh, one of the best moments is. When Farley grabs him by the neck and goes, lay off me, I'm starving. Oh, yeah, the Gap Girls? Yeah, when he goes, lay off me, I'm starving. No, wait. Yeah, how it do starts we, Monday. Wait, how do we all do impressions? And David, you did not do Michael J. Fox. Oh, we do that a lot of shows. Yeah, casually. Sorry, you were no, introduced because David. It's because it's sad I only do one. No, it's not. <laughs> it's, people are waiting for it. It's the end of the podcast. Can you just, hey, Sarge, hey, Sarge. Yeah. And Casualties of War, Michael Fox, Michael J. Fox. Hey, listen, uh, you got to give me a minute on this here, Sarge. She's just a farm girl. She did nothing wrong. <laughs> it, it's, you should do a cameo as Michael J. Fox. Like, you know, those I things am. where you can do. It's, it's $9. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you charge a buck. Happy Everybody birthday, gives you a doll. Say, Sarge. Happy hey, birthday. Should, you guys should do, oh, you're, none of us are on SNL. We do celebrity cameos you should do on your show. Do all impressions and everyone does their cameo. Yeah. You know, it's funny. We should. Hey, I heard it's your birthday, Sarge. <laughs> you say it's your, your birthday, own. Sarge. You're going to have a I can't do it without saying Sarge to someone. I need okay. Sarge. You got to have Sarge in there. Like, exactly. He's <laughs> talking to uh, Sean Penn in the scene. Because Sean Penn uh, attacked a farm girl and uh, I heard you're you getting like, your kidney removed Sarge and I just key, wanted to wish you the, the key to get an Oscar hey. is always look like the sun is in your eyes yeah man Sarge oh yeah that is good <laughs> you're squinting that's part of it don't yeah. give away all the tricks uh, mm. uh, alright Jimmy I know you got the show we, tonight we appreciate heart, yeah enjoy I, the I'd show love, tonight I'd love uh, thank you so much for inviting me to do the show we and, loved uh, you having guys are you. two uh, of my favorite comedians ever uh, on the planet and I just love both you guys so much and congrats on the show and I hope I didn't bore you guys too much. No way. It You're was the fucking such stud. a blast. I told David last night on our walkie talkie I go, Jimmy's just going to be fun and you were. It was just a blast. It was just a blast. We I didn't get all, all the questions. We're supposed to ask a lot of new questions. Didn't get to them. It's just a surprise scare scare band. Hey, go to, <laughs> go to the Gap. Go to the, the surprise of the cable connection sweaters. <laughs> okay, bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye, bye boys. Hey, what's up, flies? What's up, fleas? What's up, people that listen? We want to hear from you and your dumb questions. Questions, ask us anything. Anything you want. You can email us at flyonthewall at cadence13.com. Yeah, you read it. Okay. The, the... This is from Linda Brandt. Um, hi, David and Dana. That's nice. Hi, Linda. If you could go back and be on any season of SNL other than your own, ah. which cast would you most want to work with? And what do you think you could add to the mix? Thanks for the podcast. I look forward to it almost every week. Sometimes I'm busy. That's too much information. So anyway, what do you think? Uh, Who would you go back to by or the way, forward we, to? I have a big coat on right now. By the way, if we ever yeah. sell merch, Dana, we'll sell just a black t-shirt. That's your merch. Uh, it's, it's called Be Simple in Black. It's called Be Cool. You're cool. Chicks like this. If you have a pair of Levi's and a black t-shirt, and you're kind of fit like most of our crew is here. The ladies go crazy. It's all about the relationship between the shoulder and the hip. If I had to go back in time and do an SNL cast, I I think I would probably want to be on that first year just because it was such an explosion of just blew up the whole country and no one Mm -hmm. saw it coming. I don't think I could add a lot to it. I'm not a super character guy. I just... Mm-hmm. I would just like to be there because it was so cool and it was such a mm-hmm. big fucking deal. Dana? Uh, thank you, David. I think that I, when I think about people I'd like to play with, I, I, I couldn't really pick a a cast or a season, but I'd love to have been in Coneheads with Dan Aykroyd or loved to have done something with Bill Murray. 
I got to do stuff with Phil Hartman and Mike Myers yeah. and Adam Thobalthu and all those people. Whenever you make a list, you, later on, sure. you're up at night. What's wrong, honey? Well, I Will forgot Ferrell, to mention. Yeah. I'd love to be in a, a killer sketch with Will Ferrell. I did do one where Will is 6'4", 230, and I played his dad, Bush Sr. He was Bush Jr., and all he right. had to sit on my lap. I'm 5'8", 150 on a good day. So that was, but the surgery was successful. It was a hip, dis but no, we did do that, and that was awesome. I do also- well, I like everybody. I think the current cast is best. I hate a grumpy old man and my day yeah. was better. I say the current cast, I would love to go in there with Chris Red and Heidi Gardner. And, yeah. you know, uh, obviously that's all I can do. I'm sorry. I can't answer the question because it's, it's a fool's, it's fool's yeah, game. Yeah, you know, it takes people a long time to know the cast. So by the time you know them well is about the time when they leave. So the cast is usually more famous after the show. Uh, when we were there, mm -hmm. not many people knew us. And then you leave and they go, oh, that was such a great time. Meanwhile, everyone said we sucked. So when we were there, mm -hmm. and that usually happens. They go, this this cast yeah. sucks. I wish I'd stayed a few more as long. I could have gone toe to toe with you we, since we should have done some kind of like, hey, I'm Fricky, I'm Fracky. You know, it's yeah. a little talk show characters. Fricky and Fracky could have yeah. possibly gone a read through <laughs> and crushed yeah. it. Uh, but thank you for asking and uh, keep the questions coming and we'll keep the answers long. Fly on the Wall has been a presentation of Cadence 13. Please listen, rate, and review all episodes. I'm not joking. I'm not suggesting you do it. You have homework. Don't leave until you take care of this. Executive produced by Dana Carvey and David Spade, Chris Corcoran of Cadence 13, and Charlie Finan of Brillstein Entertainment. The show's lead producer is Greg Holtzman with production and engineering support from Serena Regan and Chris Basil of Cadence 13.